What's up everybody, it's Darius, and today I'm coming to you guys with a Destiny 2 lore video. Today I wanted to discuss the realization that we most likely will not have ghosts or subclasses in Destiny 2 to an extent and go over some potential lore that we may face in the campaign for Destiny 2. Now as I had reported before in a Destiny 2 news haul sort of video that Nolan North had confirmed that he was coming to play the role of the ghost again in Destiny 2, which is great news. However, this does not mean that at some point in the game we will have our ghost. Now, this is all just speculation based off of the trailer we got a little bit ago, but if you look back at the reveal trailer, there is not a single ghost in sight. Another thing you will notice is that we see no use of subclass abilities except for one, Ikora Ray using her Stormcaller melee on a Cabal. But other than that, we see no other use of subclass abilities in sight in the trailer. Now how both the absence of a ghost and powers in the trailer ties into the lore of Destiny 2 becomes more concrete when we look at this, the Traveler. When first looking at the Traveler in the trailer, you can clearly see a difference in how it normally looks. It is red and orange in hue, looking as though it might be on fire on the inside. However, as you look at it a little more, you can start to notice a pattern that is also not usually there. Sort of like a holographic netting. This is important because if you look at this still from the trailer right here, you notice that the same sort of netting can be seen on this Cabal shield. So what does this all mean? Well, for starters, right off the bat, we can make a safe assumption that whatever has happened to the Traveler is due to the Cabal. Obviously, the Traveler wasn't in this state prior to their arrival, so it's safe to say that on their arrival, they made adjustments to how the Traveler looks. But that's not all they did to the Traveler. To give context to my next point, we must look at a Grimoire card ghost fragment, Cabal 4, where it seems to be a transcript made by a team of surviving Skyburners on Phobos that is being sent to Primus Ta'an. This transcript mainly details how a number of encounters have gone when facing Guardians, but the most telling part of this transcript, and one that can explain what exactly may be happening to the Traveler in the Guardians in Destiny 2, is in this section here that reads, quote, 2. Analysis This is an archetypical engagement. It represents many hundreds of failed operations. Guardian activity in the Freehold AO has exploded across recent campaign seasons. Tactical attrition exceeds both frictional projections and our ability to regenerate losses. New tactics are necessary. The primary threat is the Guardian's individual counter attrition capability. Guardians can rebuild after a total disintegrative trauma. This capability is provided by a small autonomous drone unit called a dead person. Translation unclear. The dead person conceals itself during combat. It is not a viable target for direct fire. Saturation attack by artillery, heavy air, orbital fire may be good effect, although guardians transmit frequently and refuse to assemble into large formations. Solitary dead persons have been observed in all areas of operation. The relationship between solitary and paired dead persons remain unclear. Scion analysis indicates that the specific areas are inimicable to Guardian counter-attritional reconstruction. Phobos Command has initiated the orbital survey. BLI-2 will attack the Vexgate artifact in Meridian Bay to secure possible related intelligence. Flare analysis suggests that the Hive have developed unconventional counter-dead person capability. The capture of Hive leadership might yield vital strategic intelligence, including weapons or tactics capable of defeating Guardians permanently. We advanced that the Hive fleet group near Saturn presents a strong target. For the Primus, our highest duty done, unflinchingly loyal Skyburner VASI." End quote. To put it plainly, this Skyburner transcript suggests that Primus to on that they need to rethink how they go about defeating Guardians due to our ability to respond by way of ghosts, aka dead persons, reviving capabilities. It suggests that the Hive may have abilities on how to prevent this from happening, and suggests that they investigate this ability to possibly use for their own. This is why we see their arrival on Oryx's ship, because of course Oryx is a Hive god, and he is a huge source of Hive energy. This is where they'd want to go if they were looking for potential abilities that the Hive have to kill Guardians permanently. Let's fast forward past the Taken King and into Destiny 2 again. We've defeated Oryx and the Dreadnought is empty, left to the Cabal potentially. As time passes, whether it be on the Dreadnought, or some other planet, or even another solar system, the Cabal might have just found what they were looking for, a way to kill Guardians permanently. Taking control of the Traveler by way of some sort of holographic yet powerful netting 
that prevents the use of our ghosts and our subclasses, well at least the ones that we were granted by the Traveler. Subclasses Night Stalker, Sunbreaker, and Stormcaller were all achieved by harnessing the power from each respective element, Void, Solar, and Art. We were taught these powers in some form or fashion other than just being granted them by the Traveler. That might also explain why Akora Ray was using her Stormcaller melee in the trailer due to her only being able to use powers that she learned not from the Traveler itself. Whatever happens in Destiny 2, it's safe to assume that whether it be our ghost being temporarily gone or the same happening to our subclasses, we're going to have to find a way to get rid of whatever the Cabal have done to the Traveler. We're not going to be able to take on Gary and the Red Legion without it or our ghost. So that's it for this Destiny lore type of video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is the first time I've ever actually really done something like this, but going into the Grimoire itself and looking at the cards. It was a lot of work. I did obviously have some sort of help by Reddit and other Destiny lore YouTubers on this platform, but it was still a little bit hard. So I do hope you guys enjoyed it and appreciate the potential of our subclasses and ghosts being god, at least maybe for a temporary amount of time in Destiny 2. Whatever happens, again, this is not confirmed, but looking at the trail and what we've all gathered as a community, it's most likely gonna go in this direction somehow, and I'm very excited to see what happens. But who knows, we might be completely wrong and that all might have just been for show in the trailer. But anyways, again, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please share it with others that might be interested in this video, and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content and Destiny 1 content coming in the future, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.